Hey there, I'm Carrie, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about The Bells, a poem by Edgar Allan Poe that was published in 1849. So the way I'm gonna do this video is I'm gonna read the entire poem start to finish. It is a little bit longish, uh, and then I'm going to go back and break it down verse by verse and do some analysis. If you've already listened to the poem or read it, go ahead and scroll down now and get in the video notes and uh, skip the read through and just go straight to the analysis, just the breakdown of the verses. All right, without further ado, let's get into the bells. Hear the sledges with the bells, silver bells. What a world of merriment their melody foretells. How they tinkle, tinkle, tinkle in the icy air of night, while the stars that oversprinkle all the heavens seem to twinkle with a crystalline delight keeping time, time, time in a sort of runic rhyme to the tintinabulation that so musically swells from the bells, 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 from the jingling and the tinkling of the bells. Hear the mellow wedding bells, golden bells. What a world of happiness their harmony foretells. Through the balmy air of night, how they ring out their delight. From the molten golden notes and all in tune, what a liquid ditty floats to the turtle dove that listens while she gloats on the moon. Oh, from out the sounding cells, what a gush of euphony voluminously wells. How it swells, how it dwells on the future, how it tells of the rapture that impels to the swinging and the ringing of the bells, 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 of the bells, 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 to the rhyming and the chiming of the bells. Hear the loud alarm bells, brazen bells. What tale of terror now their turbulency tells. In the startled ear of night, how they scream out their affright. Too much horrified to speak, they can only shriek, shriek out of tune in a clamorous appealing to the mercy of the fire, in a mad expostulation with the deaf and frantic fire, leaping higher, 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 with a desperate desire and a resolute endeavor now, now to sit or never by the side of the pale-faced moon. Oh, the bells, 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 what a tale their terror tells of despair. How they clang and clash and roar, what a horror they outpour on the bosom of the palpitating air. Yet the ear it fully knows by the twanging and the clanging how the danger ebbs and flows. Yet the ear distinctly tells in the jangling and the wrangling how the danger sinks and swells by the sinking or the swelling in the anger of the bells of the bells. Of the bells, 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 and the clamor and the clangor of the bells. Hear the tolling of the bells, iron bells. What a world of solemn thought their monody compels. In the silence of the night, how we shiver with affright at the melancholy menace of their tone. For every sound that floats from the rust within their throats is a groan. And the people, oh, the people, they that dwell up in the steeple all alone, and who tolling, tolling, tolling in that muffled monotone, feel a glory in so rolling on the human heart a stone. They are neither man nor woman, they are neither brute nor human, they are ghouls. And their king it is who tolls, and he rolls, 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 rolls a paean from the bells, and his merry bosom swells with the paean of the bells, and he dances and he yells, keeping time, 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 in a sort of runic rhyme, to the paean of the bells, of the bells. Keeping time, 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 in a sort of runic rhyme, to the throbbing of the bells, of the bells, 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 to the sobbing of the bells, keeping time, 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 as he knells, 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 in a happy runic rhyme, to the rolling of the bells, of the bells, 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 to the tolling of the bells, of the bells, 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 to the moaning and the groaning of the bells. And that is it. Enough of the bells, am I right? Um, let's go back to the beginning and do a little bit of analysis. So the first thing that you want to notice with this poem, probably the reason your teacher assigned it to you, uh, is so you can learn onomatopoeia. So onomatopoeia is sound words, a word that suggests the sound that it is describing, if that makes sense, like the word honk is a good example. It's describing, you know, maybe the sound a goose makes, but the word honk itself kind of sounds like the sound a goose makes or bark. So you know what I mean when I say a dog barks, but the word bark also sounds like 
the noise that a dog makes. Meow works the same way. Uh, so when you're talking about something that is not an animal sound, like um, in here we have onomatopoeia with Let's see, one of the first ones is jingling. So it's talking about some sleigh bells that are jingling. And the word jingle kind of sounds like the sound that it's suggesting. It sounds like the noise that those bells make. It's onomatopoeia, that is probably what your teacher is after. So watch out for noise words in this. There's also a lot of musical terms in this, in this one. So I will try to point those out as we go. A lot of fun vocabulary SAT words too. So we'll go over those as well. Something you'll notice in this poem, the start of every verse is the same. We'll tell what kind of bells we're, we're dealing with and what they're made of. The different metals become tougher and more durable as it goes along. So it starts with silver and gold, which are very soft, precious metals, and it goes on to brass and iron, which are much tougher uh, metals that are used in industrial work. This poem has four verses, and there's two ways that I think you can look at these verses. First, you can equate them with the passing of the seasons, like the seasons of the year, starting with winter and then spring, summer, fall. I'll explain that more as we go. I think you can also um, line them up to the seasons of life, starting with childhood, young adulthood, youth, so on. So I'll explain more of that as we go as well. And uh, yeah, so let's get back into it. Let's go to verse one. Here are the sledges with the bells, silver bells. So these are sleigh bells, you know, um, the delicate little bells that you have on a horse's harness or, um, you know, the jingle bells that they would put on a kiddo's necklace at Christmas time. So in, let me see here, where are our sound words? Um, they are, we've got a weird one. We have ten tenabulation. It's a made up word, literally. And if you're saying no, it isn't because you looked it up online. Edgar Allan Poe made it up for this poem. So the original readers of this poem would have been like, what? That's a made up word. Um, our sound, other sound words are jingling and tinkling. So again, it's the sound that those little, ding, 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 those little jingle bells at Christmas time make. Our music term is melody. So you've probably heard that word before. Melody is the tune of a song. It's the, the uh, line that a soloist would take. Let's see, not too weird vocabularies here. A sledge in the first line means a sleigh. Uh, we already talked about melody. Crystalline just means crystal or like sparkling. Tintinabulation means ringing, like a bell ringing. And like I said, he made that up. Runic rhyme. So. Runic refers to runes. If you read fantasy novels, you've probably see, probably seen runes show up in the story before. So this is a very old like pictograph language. It's usually associated with the Germanic or Scandinavian territories. And because it is so old, I mean, it's a lost language. It evokes an air of like mystery and magic. You know, it's the ancient things. Um, so it's full of whimsy. So I talked about how this poem kind of reflects the four seasons. So it starts with winter. And so you have, like I said, your sleigh bells. It's like Christmas time. It's a snow day. It's full of lots of fun and imagination and adventure and hope. And the seasons of life, this is childhood. So this is the shortest verse because childhood is the shortest phase of life. And it should be full, you know, we hope of hope and games and excitement and imagination. All right, verse two. Hear the mellow wedding bells, golden bells. So silver and gold. This is talking about youth and early adulthood. And it's symbolized here by a wedding. You know, this kind of starting out in a new chapter in life. Your sound words are rhyming and chiming. Your music word is harmony. Now, harmony is like melody and the fact that it's a song or a tune. The difference is melody can be one voice. Harmony must be at least two. So again, this kind of evokes you know, the wedding, the marriage, vocabulary words. We've got euphony. Uh, this is not, I know this sounds like euphonium, which is an instrument, but this isn't necessarily a musical term. Euphony just means something that's nice to hear. The opposite is cacophony something that is awful to hear. Voluminously just refers to volume, like it's loud. Rapture means joy, like huge joy and happiness, just you couldn't feel any happier. So in the Four Seasons analogy, this is spring. So it's full of growth, you know, things are blooming, everything is new, everything is golden. Um, in the seasons of life, like I said, this is young adulthood, this is youth. 
And this is like the honeymoon phase of life. Everything just seems so perfect. It even mentions, where is it? The turtle dove that listens. So a turtle dove, um, it's just like two turtle doves in the Christmas song. It is a symbol of love. I'm sure you've already noticed that the end of each verse has like this long repetition of bells, 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 bells. And I'm really having to fight hard not to break into like that song from, uh, you know, Disney's Hunchback. The second verse has the most repetitions of the word bells. So I think that is reflecting on, like I said, it's the honeymoon phase of life. It seems like nothing could go wrong. It seems like this golden time is going to last forever. Verse three. Hear the, law, hear the loud alarm bells, brazen bells. Brazen means brass. So we've stepped up to a much tougher industrial metal now. It is talking specifically about a fire bell, a fire alarm. Uh, once upon a time, communities that, you know, there wasn't phone service or things like that, they might have a bell in the center of the town. So if there was a fire or another emergency, you could run to the bell and ring it to call for help. Um, also, you know, this was published in 1849. The U.S. already had fire engines. They were horse-drawn fire engines with a little steam-powered water pump on them. And just like today's fire engines have a siren to tell you to get out of the way, they had an alarm as well. Not a siren, but a bell, a brass bell. So this is a fire bell, an alarm bell that is calling for help. You have a lot of sound words in this one. Uh, we have... First, we have scream and shriek, clang, clash, and roar, twanging, clanging, jangling, wrangling, clamor, and clangor. Lots and lots of sound words. Uh, you don't necessarily have musical terms. Um, the one that I notice is out of tune. If you think of a fire alarm, like if you've ever been in a building where somebody yanked the fire alarm, I mean, first there's the immediate like, oh my gosh, what is that? It's loud, but it becomes obnoxious very, very quickly because they pick a note that is not nice to listen to. It's very unsettling. It's supposed to be upsetting. It's supposed to be something that you cannot ignore. And if you have trained in music, or I mean, just if you're, if you have a song that you know, and someone sings it a little off key, you notice and you're like, ah, that doesn't sound right. So he's saying that these are not nice, these bells are not nice to hear, they're out of tune. We do have a few vocabulary words. Uh, turbulency just means like disorder or agitation. Um, if you're on an airplane, you can have, you can hit turbulence and the plane shakes. Let's see, expostulation means a really strong disagreement. So it says in a mad expostulation with the deaf and frantic fire. So it's like the bell is calling for help and it's an alarm bell and the fire isn't listening. Let's see here, let's go down, palpitating, on the bosom of the palpitating air. So palpitating means beating, like you can have heart palpitations, like a, an unnatural heartbeat. So I think what it's talking about there is in the summertime, if you've ever looked at like the hood of a car and seen the heat waves coming off of it or new asphalt and seen the heat waves coming off, that is what it is talking about. It's the heat waves that you can see in the air. There's a lot of sound words in this verse. Um, it's almost too many, like it's obnoxious to hear. Um, you keep getting to this where you think the verse is over and it's not, it keeps going. And like the words itself describe that. So it talks about the twanging and the clanging, how the danger ebbs and flows. So you think the fire's out, but it comes back and you think it's out and it comes back. In the four seasons of the year analogy that I told you about, this is summer. And you shouldn't think of summer as in like, oh, summer vacation. Think of summer like scorching heat, like depending on where you live, Summer can mean any number of natural disasters. So I went to school in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and when we were getting into summer, it was like duck and cover season. The tornadoes are coming. You may live in a place where summertime means wildfires. The late summer may mean hurricane season. In the seasons of life analogy that I talked about, so this is getting past that honeymoon period and getting into adulthood and middle age. And everything is not golden all the time, um, like we were expecting it to be in verse two. Times are getting hard, you know, life has troubles, it has disasters. In this, it's characterized by a house fire, which is a very real disaster for a family. Um, but it could, this could also symbolize other disasters like illness or job loss or financial loss. So yes, things are getting tough in verse three.
Okay, verse four, hear the tolling of the bells, iron bells. So iron is the toughest metal. It's a very heavy industrial metal. And it's talking about funeral bells, the bells up in a up in a bell tower on a church. They're very large, very heavy, and they have a low, slow tone. Let's look at our sound words in here. They're all like these kind of low, slow words, just like the bells. Uh, we have tolling, groan, rolling, tolling. There's a lot of repetition in this. Rolling, tolling, rolling, tolling, moaning, and groaning. We have a couple of musical terms here. One of them is monody. This means like a death song, like a lament song. We also have monotone, not necessarily a music term, but it means like dull and unchanging. Like I'm going to say it all just in one, one tone and I'm never going to change. It's obnoxious to listen to, it's monotone. Got a couple of vocabulary words as well. We already talked about monody. Uh, ghoul, you've probably heard that before. You know, it's a little monster demon thing. They like to hang out in graveyards and eat people. Happy Halloween. Uh, Paean is like a joyful song, like a victory chant, sort of. Runic, we've talked about, it uh, relates to runes. Nels, uh, nell is the sound of a bell. It's the ringing of a bell. So we have kind of a couple of different scenes showing up in this verse. The first one, this is the only verse that uses the word we. Getting the image of like a gathering of mourners, you know, people coming together for the funeral. And then you have this like freaky little scene that comes up. It talks about the people that dwell up in the steeple. At first I thought like, you mean like bell ringers? Like Hunchback of Notre Dame bell ringers? I think what it's actually talking about are gargoyles or what we call gargoyles. I think properly they're called grotesques, but whatever. Um, it's those kind of creepy looking sculptures that are up on top of, of old churches. So sometimes they're people, sometimes they're animals. Uh, so here it says, they're neither man nor woman, they are neither brute nor human, they are ghouls. So it's saying like, I'm not recognizing that these are supposed to be saints or lions or whatever, they are just little monsters up there that feed on death. And there is a ghoul king we see who is up there ringing the bells and the funeral bells, uh, what is the sound of mourning for the people down on the ground is his like little victory chant. Like, I don't know, he got one, I guess. Um, so yeah, a paean is his triumphant song. It's interesting that they brought back runic rhyme, which we saw in the first verse. So whereas there it kind of symbolized like magic and imagination and mystery, here it's more like fear, you know, uh, demonic stuff, goblins. Like it reminds, this reminds me a lot of like the old animated Disney Sleeping Beauty where Maleficent's lair, she has a bonfire and there's all these little goblin dudes dancing around it. That is the image that I am getting here. So this comes across as very morbid. This little ghoul king is up there ringing the bells and it's his victory chant. So it says like the sobbing of the bells, you know, the sobbing of the people is what he most likes to hear. That's his little happy dance song. It's very creepy to me. Uh, so in the Four Seasons analogy, this is autumn, where everything is fading, everything looks to be dying, everything's kind of headed towards darkness. In the Seasons of Life analogy, this is death. This is the longest verse because that's the longest part of life. Um, it lasts longer than any of the other phases. So I think the reason we have this freaky little scene in the middle of it, you know, is probably kind of the musings of someone that's at a funeral. This reminds me a little bit of Romeo and Juliet where she's going to go hide in her family's tomb and she's really freaked out by it. And she gets kind of caught up in the idea of death and it pulls her to this very morbid place. So I'm getting the image of like a mourner that's come, you know, they're, they're feeling sad, but then they start kind of musing on death and it kind of pulls them in. It's kind of entrancing and they get pulled to this very morbid place where they're thinking about demons and goblins and getting pulled into the darkness. The verse ends in a very similar way to how it begins, the rolling and the tolling of the bells. So this shows them they've kind of come back to themselves. The mourner has kind of come back to reality and um, is feeling a little bit more calm and just kind of sitting in their sadness.
All right, that's about all I've got on the bells. Hope it made things a little bit more clear. Hope some of it was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe so you can see when the next story or poem becomes available. If there's a different author you are interested in, please drop that in the comments and I'll see what I can do. And yeah, that's it. Best of luck to you and I'll see you in the next chapter.